I've always, often felt like a square peg with my family. My, okay, sorry. Can you hear? Um, so I feel like a square peg mostly with my own family. My, both of my parents um, dropped out of high school. They both talk about having horrible, horrible experiences in high school. Um, well, actually not just in high school, in their entire school experiences. Um, my dad was 17 when he dropped out of seventh grade, um, and he never learned to read. Um, my mother talks about horrible experiences with sexual harassment and just, just wanting to get out of school. Um, when I went into junior high school, my parents said directly to me, don't ever do anything at school that would mean that we had to come to school to meet with anyone because we're not coming to your school. There, their memories of school were so horrible that they just wanted nothing to do with it. I, on the other hand, for whatever reason, turned out to be quite bright, which was very disconcerting to them. Um, so, um, so went into all the academic tracks, um, having not, not being raised in a family where that was around me. Um, also, of course, made me feel a bit of a square peg at school because I was in the high-level classes, but I was missing a lot of what a lot of kids got at home. Um, but that was, I mean, that's just kind of the way it went for me. Um, so I got pretty good grades and, and did well. Um, but again, at home, my dad would say to me, are you reading a book again? You know, <laughs> um, it was all very suspect. Um, so when I was in high school, uh, my senior year, and I'm, it's just all starting to sink in that all my peers and all of my academic classes are applying to college. And I thought, I, I don't know, I think I have to do that. And I remember going home and I'm sitting at the dining room table and I said to my parents, I said, I, I think I have to go to college. And they just looked at me and said, what? And I said, well, I don't know, I think that's what I need to do. And my dad said, well, why would you do that? You know, you're gonna get married, you're gonna have kids. And my mom just literally like, just wrung her hands and said, well, there's probably some papers that you need to fill out. <laughs> and I said, I, I don't know, I think I have to figure it out because I think I'm totally unemployable. My older sister had taken like business math and all this stuff and I was like, I think I'm unemployable. I took biology, I took calculus, what am I gonna do with that? So I went to uh, the guidance counselor and you know, tried to figure it out, applied for some scholarships, brought some forms home, got all filled out, tried to figure all that out, and uh, then I couldn't figure out, like, well, what colleges, how do you decide what colleges to apply to? I didn't, I don't know. So I picked one because it had a picture of, like, a science lab on the front. I wanted to be a scientist, and um, I applied to Penn State because I think everybody in Pennsylvania applies to Penn State, but then I couldn't figure out, like, how do you know which campus to apply to? And somebody said, well, everybody wants to go to main campus, and I don't know, then you pick, you know, you have to, you have like your first, second, and third choice, pick something close to home, and so I picked the one over in Philly, um, and I don't know, I, I picked another one, I can't remember how, but then I found out that it costs money to apply. So that was hard and kind of shocking, and so my parent, my mom had to kind of look at how much they could afford to even figure out how many I could apply to. And I got the application into Penn State in late. I had lost the check that my mother had given me, and so I had to hand it in later. And, the, and somebody in the guidance office just looked at me and said, she looked at my application and she said, main campus? You're late. You're never going to get in main campus. So I just need to tell you that I did. So thank you. <laughs> and um, as you might imagine, it was quite a shock to go to Penn State main campus. Um, so. Um, I was not successful, actually, I, in being a scientist. I had to switch my major, which I did in time, and I did graduate. Um, and my parents were just really, really worried about it all the time. And they really, my dad said out loud to me, you're going to be ashamed of us. And so it was just this constant, um, it was just hard. It was just hard to feel like you're just kind of doing what seems like what you need to do, and it's making your parents feel less than. Um, and so I graduated from college and I moved to York and, you know, I, I do social services and um, kind of just do my thing and try to maintain my relationship with my parents the best that I can. And later I decided to go back for my master's degree, which you can imagine was very confusing to my parents. 
<laughs> and when I was getting ready to graduate, I invited my mother, who was, she was always as supportive as she could be, but she just looked at me and I said, Mom, do you want to come to my graduation? And she's like, haven't we done this already? <laughs> so, yeah, she didn't come. But <laughs> so they don't quite, can't quite figure out what it all is. Um, but just a couple of weeks ago, I uh, asked my dad if he would uh, take my granddaughter fishing. And so we drove up into the mountains of northern Pennsylvania, which is where they've retired to, and it was truly perfect. He picked the perfect pond to take her. It was her first time fishing, and she caught 11 fish. And so I hope that in the choices that I make and the way that I continue to share my life with them, that they know that I'm not ashamed of who I am. <laughs>